Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and we've been getting a lot of questions about wire feeding. Uh, we did a, a series not too long ago on this WF5 wire feeder by CK Worldwide. Now, what we used before was actually a little wand, so it, it represented you adding filler material. Well, this wire feeder has all kinds of attachments, so the question that we had asked to us was, can you put an attachment on your torch that gives you the wire feed so you don't have to add filler. And so that's exactly what we're gonna show you today. And uh, what we've done is we've set this system up with a water cool system. And the purpose behind that is if you wanna do heavy production, you're gonna use amperage, a lot of amperage, or you're gonna have a lot of wells that are long run wells. So you, you'll use up the duty cycle you know, of the torch. So we went water cooled and you'll notice that there's uh, extra lines here. You got water in, water out. Water comes in and it circulates through the torch. The torch is fairly small, but we've had to incorporate a button here. Now, this button does nothing more than turn the wire on. Whenever we want to demand wire, we just hit the button like that. So the key to all of this is it's got this little bracketry here, and it's important to set this up to where the wire is coming in right at the base of the liquid. So you may have to make a couple of adjustments to get this just right. And that's what we're going to do here today. We've made adjustments. I've tested it a little bit. So I'm going to put my gear on in a few minutes uh, and do an actual live run. So when you're setting this up, if you want to figure out, you know, for steel, then that's what I've got in here today. Uh, I've got 030 diameter. Yeah, you know, it's just MIG wire. You know, so MIG wire is TIG wire. We're using argon gas. Uh, all the settings are like you would do manually. Argon 15 CFH, uh, but this is the trick. So I can do long runs, and if you're building projects, uh, you know that have long runs, you just continue on welding. So it's just a fatigue factor. How long can you hang on to this button and weld? But it does make it a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gear on, uh, <clears throat> turn the machine on. I'm using a 250 amp machine. And I'm doing that because it is water cooled. So this, this system right here is a little bit rigid, so you want to make sure that you stretch your cables out and get comfortable. So I'll join you in a few minutes. Okay, so uh, I'm on DC negative. I'm just on, a, on plate steel. And you can see the wire itself starting to run. And I've got it adjusted pretty good. I don't know that I'm going to change anything on here. Now it's just a matter of how steady I am. Yeah, you can see, you can see the wire just punching in there, right there at the uh, start of the liquidus. And that's exactly where you want to have it set. So uh, it's, it's not a matter of how much wire you're holding now. Now it's on a spool, so it's how much endurance do you have. And uh, I can't see my machine, but I think I'm probably running 125, 130, maybe 140 amps. Uh, you can see the distance um, from my tungsten to the puddle. It, it's, it's probably running a voltage of about, uh, oh, I don't know, probably 10 or 12. So you just keep going, and eventually I'll just get too tired and I'll have to stop. But all I'm doing is I'm pushing a button, and it allows me to run that wire as long as I want. So I'm going to go ahead and back off, let go of the button, taper off, and let my argon post flow stay over. Okay, so I, I ran about six or eight inches here, and it was actually pretty easy to do. Um, I overran my wire at the end. I, I kept on the button a little bit. So I always like to go ahead and you know, snip off that uh, it's a little bit of decarb on the end of that wire. Otherwise, it'll show up as a porosity. And th this is just dirty old steel, so it, it actually welded pretty nice. Um, holding this torch for that long, I went ahead and uh, checked the hoses and the torch, and I'm using my powered TIG uh, 250, 250 amp machine with the water cooler on it. 
and there's just absolutely no heat at all. So you, you got a lot of endurance on here. Uh, so uh, I got to give kudos to the uh, to the water cooler, especially the water cool cables. Very flexible, easy to use. Okay, so now I set my machine. I didn't know if I was going to have it 100% correct or not, but it seems to be in pretty good shape. Uh, I got my wire speed at the right wire speed. I'm just running a, a, a 1 16th diameter tungsten pointed, but I'm going to go ahead and I've, I've got some plate steel. This is stuff that you just get out of the scrapyard. Uh, it's quarter inch plate and putting it on a, a 1 8 inch you know, piece of steel, and I'm going to do this with a fillet basically using the same settings. Now, I do have a foot control back here, so I can vary the amperage accordingly. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty close to where I need to be. So uh, let me get set up here again, and uh, I'll join you in a few minutes. Okay, I think I'm uh, right where I need to be. I'm actually welding with one hand. The other hand is just kind of uh, helping me stabilize. And again, it just gets down to how long can you hold your breath? Okay, I think um, my amperage is probably a little bit low, but I'm just going to keep going. This is steel. It's uh, pretty forgiving. I likely need maybe another 20, 25 amps on this, but I just want to finish this out so you can see really how easy it is. Also, when you're doing steel, there's, you know, especially unclean steel, there's a little decarb layer on there, and it just takes a little more to punch through it. So, I'm going to go ahead and terminate this weld. Let off the wire, back off the amperage, and then uh, taper off slowly. I still got post flow argon on there. And, uh, well, it's kind of a fun world, like I say. Okay, this, this really was a fun weld to do because all I had to do was hold the torch, and again, hold the torch like a pencil and use this finger to hit the button to turn your wire on. And that's all you got to do, just get a nice, even travel speed. And I even use this hand as a guide. So it kind of helped stabilize things. So I, I ran about eight or eight or nine inches here. Um, like I say, one of these plates is a little bit rusty, but that's okay. Um, it requires a few more amps to punch through. Now, one of the things I want to do in the future is I want to set this up and do some other materials. I want to do some more exotic materials like titanium, some stainlesses, and things like that. But I want to show you how you can mechanize this. And, and we're already what I call semi-automatic. So uh, in the future, you're going to see me set this up on a, like a bug -o track system and, uh, and run some parts. And then I'm going to do some rotary type work. So uh, stay tuned for more of this. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.